day. Hump day. Welcome to a whole lot of Zeb channel. Gonna talk a little diecast. Um, I'm gonna be opening the uh, mystery bag that I forgot to open on my uh, gift box from Chris Arthur yesterday. So I'm gonna reveal what's in the bag today. Um, and I managed to put the SRT Hellcat to use, uh, the Siku. <clears throat> so, let's just have me sit down here and uh, there's the uh, Siku. I thought that was cool that it had a, a hitch on it, so it's being used right now. Okay, so there's that. Um, Schmel under glass. It's cool. Again, that's from uh, Chris Arthur. Arthur. He said, uh, uh, I say his last name funny. Um, I'm curious now, some of my Australian friends out there, um, if, if uh, you could just uh, freely pronounce Arthur on one of your channels, on, on like one of your videos, just so I can hear how you say it, so I can try to mimic it, <laughs> so I can try to impress Chris. <laughs> Because I, I, I'm, I'm not doing a good job on the last name, so or it's just the way uh, Americans pronounce it, or maybe it's just the way I'm pronouncing it. I don't know. Uh, I've been told I sound like Rocky sometimes. Um, it's got to be that Philly thing. So, uh, all right, I gotta try to put my phone down balance it have you guys have some eye candy at the same time I try to open this and uh, I think along with getting some uh, markers tomorrow uh, DC I think I'm going to um, uh, purchase a tripod. You could get, man, you guys can barely see what's going on over there. Missing the whole thing. Sorry, it's because I'm sitting down. You know what? I'm just going to aim it there. Put my finger in the way. I feel like I should just start this whole thing all over again. But screw it. I'm leaving the bloopers in and all. The hell with it. I'm just rolling with it. I don't need to impress anybody. Just having some fun. So, here I am opening up the mystery bag. The Hot Wheel mystery bag. Uh, if I could ask Bonzo for a drum roll, that would be awesome, but I just don't think that's going to happen. And have here. What do we have here? I guess you guys would like to know what it is too, wouldn't you? I got an empty bag here. <laughs> All right, I'll share with you. I'll share. I'll share. This is a beauty. And yes, it's a another German make um, this is a Porsche Cayman S there you go I gotta turn this on spin this baby there you go dropping it look at that Chris is sending me some cool stuff and I'm breaking things before you guys can get a chance to see them 
It's not broken, Chris. I'm just kidding. Okay. Oh, there it is. Sorry it took me so long. Um, but there it is. It came with a, a Hot Wheels sticker. Um, well, evidently, my daughter had pointed out to me uh, yesterday when I had mentioned I don't recall seeing these mystery Hot Wheel bags in the States. Uh, my daughter Ireland informed me that that in Target, they're over by the baseball card section. Well, okay. One, I don't, I don't really shop in Target because they, they got such a, a dinky selection of, of cards. I mean, their, their uh, binge barrel is is bigger than what they have on pegs, and it, it, what they have in the bin is nothing to really scoop through. Unless you're really that desperate. Um, anyway, she informed me that they haven't bought the baseball cards, and I did not know this because I'm not a baseball fan. Uh, I apologize to any of you baseball fans out there. Um, well, I'm not really apologizing. It's just we all have different things that we like and don't like, and I I, I can go get involved in a pick-me-up game of baseball, like, like like a backyard game or whatever, and have a little fun. Uh, watching professional baseball is, for me personally, is like watching paint dry. Um, it's watching uh, two guys throw a ball back and forth, and occasionally somebody whacks it. Um, it's kind of boring. Uh, the only thing that throws any interest to me in that regard is uh, when uh, the pitcher hits one of the batters and it uh, causes both benches to clear. Then baseball becomes very interesting. <laughs> so um, I guess for any of you outside of the country, I'm not your typical uh, baseball apple pie Chevrolet guy. I am uh, apple pie and Chevrolet, just not the baseball. <laughs> so, um, football, I love. I love football. Love my Philadelphia Eagles. Um, I'm probably going to lose some people now because I mentioned that. Maybe I should watch what I say. <laughs> uh, but this is this is really cool. Thank you so much, Chris. Um, that was a cool surprise. Mystery, almost like the mystery machine. So, um, I uh, managed to do. A little peg shopping today and I don't have anything on carded or unboxed um, yeah, my dog Ellie just groaned at that one I got disappointed her too um, Way back in the days when we just I'm sure you've all football. seen it before, but it, you know what, if you guys are okay with uh, uh, checking out this uh, Porsche for, for a little bit and listening to Mr. Robert Plant, John Henry Bonham. John Bonham. Bonzo. Um, let me just open this up real quick. And what a half-assed video this is. I'm telling you. 
Yeah, Robert thinks it's funny. I don't. Yes, that's right, John Henry Bonham. Straight from Monty Bonham's Flying Circus. <laughs> John's going to help us out on a bit of percussion. And the doctor's going to help him out too. This is a song that I guess on a day like today when our good queen is wandering the streets of England shaking hands with people. We should sing a song that's reminiscent of the, the English countryside. And it goes like this. That is so cool that John Paul Jones is a multi-talented instrumentalist. Um, he did quite a bit in that band besides play bass. He also played the acoustic guitar. He played the mandolin. And occasionally he also played the bass pedal while he was playing either an acoustic guitar or uh, a mandolin or one of his uh, triple neck guitars. Um, and I believe he is using one of his triple neck guitars on this song along with Jimmy Page's... Uh, Martin D45 that he uh, customized himself and I cringe every time I see videos from the song Remains the Same as he uh, put holes in it to run cables and wires through it uh, to mic the, uh, the pickup. Um, it sounded really nice but it's it's a one of a kind and he uh, definitely made it his own uh, incidentally the song battle of evermore um that's john paul jones singing sandy denny's version um sandy denny was a, a female singer who accompanied uh robert plant on the Battle of Evermore on the studio version on Led Zeppelin 4. Um, Alright, it's off the bass. So I guess you guys know I was busy taking an M2 off and I just wanted to look it over and make sure that everything was intact before I presented it so nothing's falling apart on it. It is yet another gasser. Um, uh, I, I apologize to uh, Twice Diecast. Um, I know he's not crazy about the uh, tinted windows. Um, but uh, that's just one of the things that comes with the gas or territory. Uh, everybody likes something different. You know, to each his own. That, that's fine. He doesn't have to like it. It's okay. There's no problem with that. Um... Personally, I do like it. I, I think it's a really cool concept that they do that. Uh, so what this is, is a 67 gasser, the instigator. I'm sure you guys have probably seen other people with it floating around. Um, and, you know, I'm talking away here, and I don't even know how well you can see it. I, I'm really sorry about that. Um, you can get a better look at it from here. I'm just yapping away. <clears throat> I like the color green. It's pretty cool. So like I said, I'm sure you guys have seen this one before. Um, but it, it's new to me and every time I've seen it, I've always had an interest in it and just 
Um, couldn't justify what they were asking for it at the time on eBay or on Amazon for the prices I was seeing it for. Uh, especially when I just picked it up for $9.99 at Hobby Lobby. Uh, again, when I buy something on the pegs in a store, I feel like I, I just won the, the Nobel Peace Prize or something. It, it's, it's like a big deal because, like I said, the majority of everything that I have on my wall has all been offline. That's where I got most of my stuff. So... It's it's nice for a change to uh, be able to get something on the pegs and not have to worry about the shipping costs all the time. Not that I have a problem paying shipping costs, but um, as many cars as I have ordered, it, it kind of adds up. So I try to minimize that as much as possible when and if I can which is very seldom because there's really not too much floating around in this area. Um, I, I think really I'm one of those maggots right now scraping the, the bone, the meat off the bones over at the Hobby Lobby in New Jersey. <laughs> so once I clean out over there, then I know I'll come back to this one over here by me and <laughs> see if they upgraded. <clears throat> But anyway, that's my uh, instigator 67 gasser, Nova gasser. This is a far cry from Tambo. Um, I had gifted that song was to of, uh, Diecast Clown, um, and I did not even know this at the time, because it doesn't actually say it on the card. I mean, it says it clearly on the car itself, but I I wasn't really looking that closely. Um, I didn't have this taken out of the the blister pack, so I'm just going to show it to you through the blister pack. Anyway, what I had gifted him was uh, all it says is Dave Tucker's 1969 Chevrolet Camaro, and it's a uh, Detroit Speed. Um, I saw that and I just saw the gold trim and the black and it just, it wasn't overdone. It wasn't overkill. I like the, uh, split in the color there on the wheels, the gold and silver, um, or chrome rather, excuse me. Um, I, I liked it, you know, and then here, um, as, Diecast Clown's doing his review on it. He said that, oh, yeah, it's a Yanko. And I was like, oh, shit, it is. Um, I'm, I'm a big fan of the uh, the Yanko and the Copo and the Baldwin and, uh, uh, you know, um, can't think of my off the top of my head, but, uh, and even uh, Yanko and Copo did a, a, uh, a collaboration together with uh, Nova. Um, they did. It's called the Deuce. Um, it's part Yanko, part Kobo. Um, it's pretty cool. But I do collect. I try to collect the uh, Yanko and the Kobo as much as I can. Um, so that's why I would say I, I have a lot of Camaros. <laughs> I think I have more Camaros than I do Chevelles, honestly. Um, and I have quite a few Chevelles. So, uh, this is what I had picked up. And uh, it was cool to see what was in the mystery bag. Thank you again, Chris. Uh, Chris Arthur, mate. I don't know, how's that? I don't know. I'm trying. Or should I just go to New England? <laughs> I wouldn't know how to do his voice in New England. I just know how to say wicked hardcore. <laughs> Whatever. Um, so, anyway, I 
I was even that much more interested in this car once I found out that it was a Yanko because if you're not really paying attention to the car in the, that great detail, I mean, I know it says it right there, but I was just looking at the overall car and I just saw a stripe and black and I wasn't really paying attention to any wording on the back there because it's... if you're not paying attention to it you don't really notice it and especially when you're down here and all you see is dave tucker's 1969 chevrolet camaro i guess if you know who dave tucker is then you know he has a yanko camaro but uh, i mean am i being ignorant and not knowing who dave tucker is is he is he famous um maybe i should have done a little research beforehand i guess that would have been nice huh uh maybe okay they got a maybe they're just uh Mo's Garage, okay. okay, Dave Tucker, okay, the guy is a real guy, um, I wonder if he built it, or he just owns it, now I'm curious, or, or not build it, but re, refurbished it, or, uh, did a rotisserie on it, I don't know, um, I'm kind of curious. I should do some research on that. But anyway, I I really did get drawn more to it because Diecast Clown was like, yeah, it's a Yanko. And I was like, ooh. So I've been searching for this one. And uh, yay, I found it on the pegs. I didn't have to order it. It would have cost me $50 plus shipping and handling. And then I would have had to put a had to sign a, a waiver and then put a co-sign on my house um it's a whole hassle just to get a damn car i swear it costs so much when you order them online but that's what you gotta do sometimes um then when you don't live in an area that really uh has the die cast that we all enjoy um, some of us are lucky and have easy access, um, others not so lucky. I'm lucky to have a little access, at least I have that, uh, so. Alright, um, I babbled quite a bit and, and gave you guys quite a crappy video, um, my apologies, um, but I committed to it 10 minutes into it and said i'm just gonna roll with it so got the bloopers and all in this one um not like i edited anything i've ever done before anyway but this one was just especially off <laughs> for whatever reason so anyway thank you guys for hanging out and uh and subscribing to my channel i appreciate it um i do appreciate my subscribers uh and um thanks for hanging with me while we uh talk some diecast and listen to some kick-ass music in the background and uh get to hear robert's english accent uh, i i do love I do love the accent, I gotta admit it. Australian, English, it's just... Yeah, now he sounds like he's from Texas. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Blues Brothers. That's pretty funny. Okay. So, anyway, that's it for me. Uh, you guys, enjoy the rest of your evening. And, uh... Thanks for hanging out with me. Uh, I'm Rick, and this is a whole lot of Zip Channel. Um, hit that subscribe button and like and share. I'd appreciate it. I'll catch you guys on my next one. Stay safe and be healthy. Take care.